Hello and welcome to the episode 148 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The end of the Beatles' first tour, a drug-fueled party in 1967, and a compilation of the first master of the Get Back project are some of the highlights of today's episode. 28th of May 1960, seventh and final date of the Johnny Gentle Scottish tour with the Silver Beatles acting as the singer's backup band. Tonight, they played the Rescue Hall in Peterhead. In the anthology book, George Harrison comments about the tour. The band was horrible, an embarrassment. We didn't have amplifiers or anything. What little pay we did get was used to take care of the hotels. And we all slept in the van. We would argue about space. There weren't enough seats in the van and somebody had to sit on the inside of the mudguard on the back wheel. Usually Stu. Moving on to 1961, we find the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performing at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany. 1962, the Beatles are still in Hamburg and still with Pete Best in the lineup, but this time around, the venue has been upgraded to the more prestigious Star Club. On this date in 1963, the Beatles and the rest of the Roy Orbison package tour arrived on the stage of the Gaumann Cinema in Worcester. And it's party time in 1967. To celebrate his moving into his new house in Kingsley Hill in Sussex, recently acquired for £25,000, about £382,000 in 2020 money, Beatles manager Brian Epstein gave a housewarming party tonight. All the Beatles were in attendance but Paul McCartney, who preferred to spend some time with his girlfriend Jane Asher after her return from the Old Vic tour in the United States. Check out episode 95 of What A Fab Day for more on that. Other celebrities and friends of Epstein attended the party, including Beatles' former press officer Derek Taylor and his wife Joan. Taylor was now working in California for other rock acts and was putting together the Monterey International Pop Music Festival, and his wife was seven months pregnant. But they chose to fly in to attend. The Taylors were greeted at the airport by George Harrison, John Lennon, Ringo Starr, and Terry Doran and Barry Finch of the design collective The Fools. The group had been busy with a night long of LSD experiments and came dressed in full psychedelic attires permed hair, scarves, and bells as ornaments, the whole stereotype. John Lennon taught the new way of greeting friends to the Taylors. You hug your friends when you meet them and show them you're glad to see them. Don't stand there shaking hands as if everyone's got some disease. Get close to people. After stopping by at the Harrisons and the Lennons to get rid of their antiquated clothes and get an attire more in tune with the swinging of the times, the Taylors, plus all the rest of the gang, went to the party, riding in three cars. Harrison and Lennon drove their cars, despite being under the influence of LSD and pot. Surprisingly, everyone got to the party. Miraculously, nobody was hurt in the process. At the party, the Taylors found Epstein, much more relaxed than usual. DJ Kenny Everett, composer Lionel Bart, Beatles friend from Hamburg, Klaus Vorman, and many other guests. During the night, Derek Taylor had his first experience with acid, with a robust dose of it, plus some desbutol, amphetamine combined with barbiturate, for extra stimulation. Unsurprisingly, he experienced nightmarish visions about the future, but he was ultimately calmed down by George Harrison. Cynthia Lennon, instead, was less fortunate. Left alone by John, also on a somewhat bad trip himself, she ended up contemplating suicide alone in a room through similar disturbing visions and thoughts. Frankly, I'm surprised they could remember enough to tell the tale. Needless to say, especially since this is a family podcast after all, I invite you to abstain from drugs. And if you must take them for some daft reason, 
at least do them with a bit of brains, without mixing things at random to see what happens. Besides, if you really want to be tripping, well, uh, you know already what I'm gonna say. That's right, go to www.simonmas.com support and find out how you can be fab and support my efforts to create this and other music-related content. Now, that's a great way to stimulate the brain. Moving on to the 28th of May 1969, we find engineer Glyn Jones again working on the 8-track tapes of the Get Back project at the Olympic Sound Studios. This was an important session, producing a tentative master tape for the album, with this running order. 1 after 9 and 9, recorded on the 30th of January. Rocker, Improvisation, recorded on the 22nd of January. Save the Last Dance for Me, recorded on the 22nd of January. Don't Let Me Down, recorded on the 22nd of January. Dig a Pony, recorded on the 24th of January. I've Got a Feeling, recorded on the 24th of January. Get Back, recorded on the 28th of January. For Your Blue, recorded on the 25th of January. Teddy Boy, recorded on the 24th of January. Two of Us, recorded on the 24th of January. Maggie May, recorded on the 24th of January. Dig It, recorded on the 26th of January. Let It Be, recorded on the 31st of January, with overdubs recorded on the 30th of April. The Long and Winding Road, recorded on the 31st of January. And Get Back Reprise, recorded on the 28th of January. With John Lennon in Montreal, Ringo Starr in the Bahamas, and Paul McCartney in Corfu, Greece, the only Beatle present to this session was George Harrison. This concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. Tomorrow, we'll have a quick episode in which we'll reflect on the outcome of the Silver Beatles' first tour. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.